Shocking new details in the brutal slaying of a Georgia nursing student, Lake and Riley, at the hands of a criminal illegal immigrant. The liberal media is trying to blame everything but Joe Biden's open borders insanity for what happened. The 22-year-old had gone out for a run, but never returned. Autopsy results show her cause of death, blunt force trauma to the head. Cops charging their prime suspect for the murder. A 26-year-old Venezuelan national named Jose Antonio Ibarra. He's among the millions who the president let enter our country through the southern border back in 2022. Ibarra had been living in New York City for over a year. In September, he was arrested and charged with child endangerment, but cops cut him loose before ICE could issue a detainer. And that's when he headed south. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp says Joe Biden has blood on his hands. The American people know exactly what happened. The southern border was open. You've had people like Greg Abbott that have had to take the situation into their own hands, and thankfully he has. You can see how to secure the border. This president and this, you know, so-called czar of the border, vice president, uh, did not do that. And they were hoping the American people were going to ignore this issue. And now we have a dead young woman because of it. And the Associated Press is doing everything they can to avoid mentioning that the suspect is illegal, referring to him as an Athens resident and focusing their headlines on the dangers of women jogging alone. Check out this ridiculous framing. You ready? Quote, the killing of a nursing student out for a run highlights the fears of solo female athletes. Sandra Smith, you are a jogger. Oh, yeah, we have a race still coming, don't we? The two of uh, no, I'm, I'm hurt. <laughs> but, I mean, this is not what this story highlights, is it? That headline infuriates me as a runner. Judge, you know I love to run. And is the message now that because we've let illegal immigrants, um, some of which are, 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 you know, part of these heinous crimes, including this one, where this man killed a 22-year-old college student, that now college students, young women all around the country, we're supposed to just, we're supposed to change our activities. We're supposed to change our lives. We're supposed to adapt to this new normal that is men coming into this country and, and violently killing um, college students who feel like they're safe on their campus. You know what I did, Jesse? Um, preparing for that interview with Governor Kemp out of Georgia earlier today on America Reports, I went and pulled sound from Kamala Harris, September 2022. And remember, this would have been when that man was walking over our border, okay? Kamala Harris, the border is secure. That's September 2022. KJP, uh, the border is not open. Uh, in a hearing on the same date, Secretary Mayorkas was asked, is the border secure? Yes. So not only were they ignoring the crisis, then downplaying playing it, but now only to get involved when it's become a crisis and a campaign issue for the president's reelection bid. I mean, people all over the country, you saw the Fox News voter analysis out of South Carolina. It's about immigration. I mean, double digits more than the economy. I mean, you've got more Americans all over this country, far from the border, who are saying this is the most pressing issue facing our country today. And parents are terrified that this is coming to a college campus near their son or daughter. It's terrifying. And, Judge, they had this guy not only at the border but in, in New York. Yeah, they had this guy. And the amazing thing is what Sandra is talking about is in September 22. I think it was Corrine Jean-Pierre who said the president has taken unprecedented actions yes. to make sure that Same our border moment. is secure. I mean, it's a lie. I'll go farther than anyone else. And I'll, further, I should say, than anyone else. It's a lie. You know, the amazing part of this is that liberals... Uh, they end up demanding gun control after a shooting, but they never demand border control after things like this happen to young women like that, Molly Tibbetts, all the angel moms across America whose children's lives have been taken by people who shouldn't be here. And, you know, it's not that difficult to recognize in a lot of these cases that some of these defendants have tats or tattoos that indicate their MS-13, that they shouldn't be allowed in this country. But in the end, the white White House doesn't care about it. Where's Joe Biden talking about this? He's not saying one word. George Floyd dies, and there were something like, I think, 27 or 28 uh, texts out of, out of the White House, but not for this. And in the end, we have subjected ourselves 
to becoming victims because we have fewer police, we have fewer border patrol, we don't have a president who cares about us. It's only a few weeks before the State of the Union. I guarantee he's going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to do something with an executive action and I'm going to defend Americans because the Republicans won't, which is such hogwash. You've referred to that section, I think it's 212 out of uh, Title VIII which allows a president at any point that he deems necessary to suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens. He could do that. And the truth is that this immigration uh, bill that they're going to reference, I'm sick of hearing about it. It allowed 5,000 in. It didn't do any Interpol check. It didn't do any FBI checks. It didn't have anything to do with people in the other country. And the outline process for handling migrants at the border is something that this president doesn't care about, and we're becoming victims. M Mayor Adams can talk about sanctuary cities till the cows come into the city, which is never, but he doesn't even know how to change New York from being a sanctuary city. He hasn't even investigated it. And the fact that ICE is not allowed to lodge a detainer that will be respected with the police department is again subjecting American citizens to ill legalities. Is this one of the stories, Harold, that's really a turning point in this country? My heart goes out to, to that family uh, suffering with this. We've been talking about her as a University of Georgia, so I think she's at a was at a different college and jogging on the campus, which is irrelevant to the story, but just to get that fact straight, uh, my, my prayers go out to her family. Uh, we have uh, police officers here in New York who have, have been shot at by migrants, who've been injured by migrants. These stories, unfortunately, are, are rampant. I think two things. Um, I, I can. I, I, we all deal in the solutions business, and I try my hardest to stay stay anchored there. President Biden should do some of the things that have been talked about around the table. He should suspend should suspend some class of people being able to come into the country for two weeks. He should call back the Democrat Republican leaders of the House and the Senate and say we're not leaving the White House until we get a deal to make our border safer. I don't believe that the president alone can do all of the things that need to be done at the border. Otherwise, Senator Lankford and Republicans in the Senate and Democrats who were working furiously on a bill would not have been doing it if the president alone could do this. It's a strengthened effort if we're able to do it with the Congress, meaning the House and Senate passing something. You guys are adults, men and women. Get back to Washington. Let this be the catalyst that you suggest, Jesse, although we're seeing these things happen around the country, unfortunately and tragically. And don't come out of the White House. Everyone check their phones so they can't be uh, communicated to by anybody outside of there and say that we will all take credit. And if need be, give credit to President Trump if that's what he wants. But we need a new border security set of a new set of border security measures. Otherwise, we're going to have more and more and more of these stories tragically. And Sandra, to your point, we shouldn't be. I agree with you 100 percent about the headline. But if we want to solve this or at least begin to solve it, Let's stop trying to take credit, stop dishing out blame, and let's get a solution to this problem, which is readily, I believe, attainable and achievable. One of the ways that makes it harder for people to get a solution is the media frames this as a jogging scandal. Greg. Yeah, as if, she, as if she died from a stress fracture or plantar mm -hmm. fasciitis. Um, imagine if you had said that George Floyd died from fentanyl, a fentanyl overdose, which people said. There was a media outcry. Now we're finding out, well, that definitely played a role. But the fact is, this woman matters less in a woke world than George Floyd and where the perceived or the accused killer is also a member of the oppressed. So you have to, you have to obliterate the truth. That's what the media did because they didn't like the narrative. So they had to keep the real story hidden because if there is justice in this world, this story would end this administration. This is the turning point. This is the story that says, well, I think the science is settled, to quote the de Democrats on climate. The science is settled. A border matters. And guess what? They sent some bad hombres. They didn't send their best. Mm -hmm. huh? Thanks for the memories. Talking heads love to say, continuing to do the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. No, it's doing the same thing over and over again and claiming a different result is the definition of intentionality. The argument isn't this ping pong, the border is broken, no it's not. That's for morons at Axios. We're way beyond that. The real argument is, if there are consistent horrible outcomes from a system that you have claimed worked, we have to assume it becomes an accepted byproduct 
to an intentional design. So it's no longer like, we think it's fine, we don't think it's fine. The Dems have to talk their way out of this one. When you look at the observable, the observable outcomes, human trafficking is an observable outcome, rampant gang violence, observable outcome, hordes of young men streaming across the border, these are all observable outcomes. And yet, as they happened, they kept happening. So if you just are watching it happen, all you can come to this conclusion is it's happening for a reason. Why, 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 is it, why didn't it stop? And we could talk about this bill, but the fact is we could have stopped it. The moment he got rid of Remain in Mexico, that was when it started. It's on him on that. But it doesn't matter when you say that because there's something else going on here that, you know, despite our protests about whether it is crime or uh, uh, riots and looting or illegal immigration, they tend to continue no matter what, which makes me think the design is intentional. So don't you think, but I agree with you, but shouldn't they come together to try to solve it? I think, I think that there, there have been people screaming for it, and I think all it takes is a signature. And I won't crow about it. I'll just go, great job, you know? But Biden got rid of 94 executive orders, and a lot of them would have prevented this. Yeah, well, that signature might have to come in about nine months. I'll take the signature now. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.